James Marshall Hendricks was born on November 27, 1942. But was he the greatest guitar player of all times? All times, times. <laughs> One thing for sure, Jimmy's legacy is alive and well in the year 2020, over 50 years after his death. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to take a closer look if Jimi Hendrix truly was the greatest guitarist of all times. And we're going to start out by checking on Google. So if I type in who was the greatest guitarist of all times, uh, Jimi Hendrix pops up, followed by Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page. The main reason for that is an article that was released in 2011 by Rolling Stone that listed the 100 top guitar players in the world. What makes a guitar player the greatest guitar player of all times? It's pretty subjective and hard to tell, um, but I would guess it has to do with your achievements, your fans, record sales, with you winning awards. But eventually it has to do with the influence that you have on the community. And today we want to take a look at all those factors, but especially here what Hendrix's peers, the most famous guitar players in the world, have to say about him. Jimi Hendrix to me is his vision is so strong aside from being a, a masterful uh, guitar player the vision of what he heard the guitar became incidental um well obviously he's he, I think he's always going to be the chosen son and the the Jesus Christ and the the Messiah of electric guitar and then also you know just his creativity and the songs he has always been um He's, he's electric rock and roll guitar personified. Mm -hmm. When I say, I mean, when I say electric rock and roll, I mean like electric lead guitar. Um, he was somebody that created his own identity and it's as strong today as it was uh, when he first came on the scene in 1966 or whatever it was. So, um, you know, uh, Hendrix means a lot. He was a, a great element of cool, just an all around personality, but somebody who just, um, you know, there's very few artists I think of in the, in the sort of rock world that just excrete music, musicality. And he was one of those guys. I remember seeing him for the first time on film and just getting blown away by what he, he was doing. I mean, he was playing fantastic lead guitar. He was playing crunchy chords with a distorted sound. Mm -hmm. And when he went into a solo, I mean, it, it, he just ripped the top of your head off. Let's talk a little bit about Eric Clapton. Mr. Clapton came in at the number two spot of this Rolling Stone poll. And there is no doubt that Clapton himself is a highly influential and especially successful musician. In his lifetime, Eric Clapton has won a staggering 17 Grammys and was nominated 37 times for a Grammy. He uh, has a net worth of 300 million and is for sure the wealthiest blues musician alive. 
But let's see what Crappen really has to say about his mate Hendrix. The night that he died, I was supposed to meet him at the Lyceum to see Sly Stone play. And I brought with me a left-handed Stratocaster. And it's the only, I found, I've just found it. I think I bought it at Orange Music. I'd never seen one before and I was going to give it to him. And he was in, he was in a box over there and I was in a box over there. And I could see him, but I couldn't, you know, we never got together. And the next day, whack, he was gone and I was left with that left-handed Stratocaster. So he doesn't really say much, but it becomes very obvious that Clapton loved Hendrix. He was a dear friend and he was just shattered when he heard about his death. When you do a little bit of research about Eric Clapton and what he had to say about Hendrix, there's really not much that comes up. And one could think that Clapton was a little intimidated by Hendrix or felt some sort of rivalry, but that's just up for speculation. All we know is what happened that legendary night where Jimi Hendrix had just arrived in London, sat in with Cream and played a dazzling version of Killing Floor. I mean, he's a very brave person who would do that. As far as I remember, he plugged into my bass amp. He did a version of Killing Floor and it blew us all away, of course. <laughs> Clapton had always loved the song, but always thought it was too difficult. And Hendrix just rages through it and does all his tricks and stunts, the kind of things that people like Little Richard and the Isley Brothers hated him doing. You know, he plays the guitar behind his head, between his legs, with his teeth. Feedback, tremolo arm, dive bombs, the whole works. He just played his arse off, basically. You know, I mean, when the first time I saw Eric, I thought, oh, there's a master guitar player, but Eric was a guitar player. Jimmy was some sort of force of nature. You know? So obviously, when Hendrix showed up in London in the year 1966, he floored everyone. This can also be evidenced by this statement of Jeff Beck. I was sick when I saw him, I can tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who wasn't? It was like, what, what the hell am I going to do tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Get a job at the post office or something, you know? <laughs> it was hopeless because everybody, everybody you talked to, you know, was saying, have you heard Jimi Hendrix? I said, yes, yeah, thank you. Now, if success would ever be a criteria of determining the greatest guitar player of all times, then we need to look at Jimmy's commercial success. Until the time he died, Jimi Hendrix built up a net worth of $5 million. The amazing thing though is that in 2019, Jimi Hendrix's net worth had grown to $175 million. Still, even though that's an impressive number, it's way below uh, other famous actors, even like Eric Clapton, his net worth is $300 million and like Sting is around 400 million. So there's definitely other artists that made more money than Jimi Hendrix. In Jimi's lifetime, the highest charging single that he ever had was Hey Joe, and it came in at number six of the US charts. That was the highest single he ever had. Now he had other singles on his first album, Are You Experienced? And Are You Experienced was actually the most successful album that he ever released and it sold 5 million copies. Now again, if you look at Eric Clapton that sold 40 million copies, that's really a small number. And there's dozens of other guitar players that sold more albums than Jimi Hendrix. Now Jimi did have a number one hit, but that was posthumously right after his death with Voodoo Chow. So to sum things up, Jimi was commercially successful, but he was not a real earner in his lifetime. Now there might be another argument to say why Jimi Hendrix is not the greatest guitarist of all times. There might be other guitarists that are more accomplished or more virtuosic than Jimi Hendrix ever was. Uh, 
that might be a subjective discussion but yeah I mean there is other great guitar players out there for sure in terms of guitar virtuosos there probably hasn't been one more daring than the late Sean Lane relatively unknown to the public Sean Lane is an absolute icon of the progressive guitar player community so let's take a look what Sean Lane had to say about Jimi Hendrix I'd say uh, my favorite in a lot of ways is Jimi Hendrix. I think he had a certain technique and a certain spirit in his music that even on the worst recording that he ever made, you know, even on all these horrible bootlegs and all these things that people dredge up, and he was probably he was probably rolling on his grave over the things. But then, but they're still awesome. You know, it's like and no matter how out of tune the guitar was, on occasionally sometimes out of tune, no matter how bad the music is, some of the time and some of these issues because he's been dead for. 20 years and he still puts out like eight albums a year <laughs> i was actually pretty surprised when i heard sean lane talk like that i didn't expect that but that brings us to the jazz world what did the jazz world think of Jimi hendrix usually typical jazz musician would look down a little bit on a guy that just played simple blues and used distortion and played loud not exactly things that are regarded highly in jazz terms. But Jimi Hendrix was somewhat of an exception. It is well documented that Jimi had a friendship relationship with Miles Davis. Miles was introduced to Jimi's music through his guitar player, John McLaughlin. Who says this about Jimi Hendrix? No, first of all, Jimi was, was just a beautiful, lovely, sweet person and absolutely unpretentious, which is actually my experience with all the great players, Miles too. Very simple, no pretension. It's just, it's the mediocre players who kind of like, you know, moody and silly. Uh, and, and Jimmy was that, he was just, he was delightful. Just a so nice person. Um, but uh, I would put Jimmy on a very high position now, it's clear that he was not a musician of John Coltrane's level, for example. But on another aspect of music, they had a great deal in common hmm. um, that, that certainly influenced me and millions of other players because what Jimmy did to the guitar was revolutionary. It was very interesting what John McLaughlin said there and I personally totally agree that Jimmy influenced millions of players in all genres um, but regarding the, the jazz scene I would say that Hendrix is one of the very few guys that had such an influence and impact on other jazz musicians and obviously it was not because of his chops because he was no John Coltrane but in some ways, his spirituality and the places he went in his improvisations was quite reminiscent to some of the jazz greats. Now, there's a lot of rock guitarists that have their roots in the blues, some more, some less. But for me, Jimmy is the pivoting point between blues and rock. He just shaped and transformed the blues vocabulary and took it to a whole new level through cranked Marshall stacks, feedback, wah-wah pedals, fuzz, but also through his technique and his sensitivity of improvisation uh, mixed in with a stage persona larger than life. He is the pivoting point and for me the origin of blues rock. But was Jimmy also regarded highly among other blues players? Let's find out. He was a genius in, in, in his own world. He, he made the world come to him. The whole world come to Henry. The whole world knows him. You, know. you can look at his face and tell you have given everything. He felt everything deep. I, I see him on TV. I never saw him person, but I, I can look at him on the film. That man has really got his heart and soul to what he's doing. 
what a great memory that is. I never will forget it because he's I, half of the time he was playing, he was like, play so I can get something from you. And I'm saying like, play so I can find out who Hendrix is. You know? So from that day on until his death, we became good friends. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I truly feel that the title of greatest guitar player of all times <laughs> goes to Jimmy and Rolling Stone magazine is absolutely right in this regard. There hasn't been any single other guitar player that influenced that many musicians and left that much of a legacy behind. In my personal opinion, if a guitar player says they haven't been influenced by Hendrix, they're either not aware of it or they're lying. What Jimmy did was paving the way for all of us, future generations of guitar players. The way he would change between rhythm playing and lead and integrate both of them just was unheard of before that. The intensity of his playing took the expectation of what a guitar solo was to a whole new level. I think that's a fact that a lot of people forget about. While there were other great guitar players and innovators around at that time in the 60s, I think it can be truly said without a doubt that the impact and influence that Hendrix had is unmatched by anyone else. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications when I come out with a new video next Thursday. Last but not least, before we wrap it up here, let's hear how Jimmy felt about his own playing. You're considered one of the best guitar players in the world. Um, how about some of the best sitting in this chair? Yeah.